Facebook group, uh, Daniel here, uh, welcome to my channel, Guilty Feet, I've got no rhythm, blah, 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 blah. Um, um, this is me in the future because everything you're about to see now is me in the past. Actually, this is me in the present. So, I'm framing the video, I, I made videos. I'm back now from my holiday, back in Israel, back at work. Um, so, what you're about to see is a, a video I made the night before I traveled, then some very little videoing uh, while I was away, but there was a lot of reading. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about nine books I've read in about the last two weeks. Uh, um, so the three that I finished before I flew, and then six that I read while I was away. Uh, um, the last 15 minutes or so of this video is me, me filming myself on the last night of my holiday. My wife had gone to bed. I'm out on the balcony. I've got the laptop on me. It's pitch black. You can hear the wind. The sound quality is terrible. Uh, I've got the light from my uh, uh, um, phone shining in my face so you can just about see me and everything's black around me. It's, it's terrible. It's that the kind of thing that if someone else did, I'd switch it off. So you are forgiven if you don't watch any of this. Uh, um, what I'll do is I'll put links below to um, um, the, uh, every time I, I finish a book, I also write a sort of two paragraph review, one or one paragraph review on Goodreads. So I'll put the links below to all the books that I mention here and um, link them to the, the reviews that I wrote for them on Goodreads so that you don't have to put up with any of this because it's, it's a lot. And uh, um, sorry, uh, so here is uh, um, pre, during a holiday and ending up on the last night. <laughs> which was a couple of days ago already, uh, in Sandrini. Had a fabulous time. Hope you guys get a chance to get away. Uh, take care. Enjoy. Bye. Hey, the booktube. Not quite sure I'm going to do this, so I'm just going to edit together a bunch of, of different reviews as I go through because I probably won't upload anything until next week, so it's going to be a super long video with loads of um, book reviews in it. Um, uh, it's now 2.30 in the morning. Tax is coming in about uh, 45 minutes, so let me just fill you in on what's going on and why it's 2.30 in the morning. Um, so over the weekend, I, last I spoke to you, I was just about to start uh, Leave the World Behind by Roman Alarm. Um, read this in a couple of sittings, um, Friday night and Saturday morning. Um, I, I, I was pleased to get through it, to be honest, because it's sort of um, uh, unrelentingly anxiety-inducing as it just sort of ramps up the discomfort. Um, and so I, I, I didn't enjoy it um, because you know, after I worked out, maybe I had 250 pages, the whole thing, about 100 pages in, I worked out there wasn't going to be sort of a happy resolution. Um, and then um, it just gets worse. And then teeth start falling out. It, you know, so, so not fun. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it, it, it. Writing itself is a little overwritten. Um, so it's not the most elegant. Um, um, and you know, so writing's overwritten. The story's a little overwrought and anxiety inducing. I don't think that's a great recommendation. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a horrible book by any stretch, but um, not my favourite kind of thing to read at all. Um, so after that, I needed something a little breezier, uh, a pick-me-up, so I went back to, picked up a, a, one of the comic um, um, graphic novels that I picked up in, uh, this was from um, Forbidden Planet, £4.99. Uh, this was originally sold in America for about $24.99, and it's got a £20.99 um, um, sticker price on it and five is about right this this, this is the origins of shield um, which of course stands for uh, I'll remember I can never remember what it is uh, strategic something in I don't know it's a stupid uh, acronym S supreme headquarters international espionage law enforcement division it never worked and so it's just better to call it shield which is a great name um, and and we see the birth of shield so, so we see Nick Fury who at the time, had had his own comic as Sergeant Fury in the Howling Commandos, um, which was all war stories, Second World War stories, and this jumps forward to the 60s, and, and he is picked by a um, mysterious cabal, which includes Anthony Stark, he's constantly referred to as Anthony Stark in this, um, uh, and he's picked to be the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, um, and so this is early spy stuff, this is sort of mid-60s, Bond is, is you know, at its height, and so this is full of secret rays, and and, and and sort of flying cars and, and all sorts of fun um, funky stuff um, it, it's probably sacrilegious to say that I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Jack Kirby's art um, and you can see you know, Jack Kirby, that's a classic Jack Kirby head there, sort of very square um, and you know, there, there's another Nick Fury with his eye patch before he was uh, Samuel L. Jackson um, you know, the classic Kirby cover uh, and uh, it just doesn't doesn't do it for me. I, I understand the kinetic 
kinetic kineticism of, of what he's doing. I just don't like the way he does faces and bodies. Anyway, um, the, the next the, the next volume that would come after this is the one that I've really been chasing, which is when Jim Stranko took over and everything went psychedelic sixties and and uh, and fun and some. If you if you have a chance to look up some of those Jim Stranko famous panels that he did as well as covers, um, that's the, really the collection I want. This was fun, uh, um, but uh, Fury is just a little angry all the time and and rude and and for some reason references soupy sales. Um, I think three or four times in this short thing. I assume that Stan Lee was obsessed at the time with Soupy Sales. It's very Stan Lee. It's very Excelsior, um, daft as anything, uh, but yeah, satisfyingly um, 60s. And then after that, I started reading this book, which is why I'm up now, because my tax is coming, I say, at, at 3.30, and I had to stay up to finish it because I did not want to take away with me on holiday a great big hardback. So this is Richard Osman's Thursday Murder Club. This is my mum bought this when it came out. Um, this is a signed copy of signed special um, exclusive um, Waterstones copies. There's like some bonus <laughs> chapter at the end, um, which is all sort of just a, another way of selling book. I, this, this for, for those of you who don't know, this is I think was the best selling book in the UK in 2020, and I think it's continued 2021. It's now I don't pay back. Rich Dosman is a super smart chap. I, I don't know how to explain him to Americans. Um, he started as a TV producer and then produced a quiz show where he kind of ended up as one of the people on the quiz show um, and just has got a super really engaging personality, very smart, very quick-witted and just a sort of, um, you know, for people like me and my mum who love quiz shows and, and like smart people, he's like the pinnacle of that. He also happens to be the brother of uh, Matt Osman who's guitarist in Suede. If that means anything to anyone, I think in you know, anyway, I was a fan of Suede. Uh, and he's, he's just an all round good egg, like he's sort of national treasure status in the UK and this was his first novel. Um, as it says on the back, Rich Osman is a British television producer and presenter. The Thursday Murder Club is his first and so far best novel. It's that kind of deprecating, <laughs> self-deprecating British humour that we love. This is about four old people um, in uh, an old age home um, in the countryside in England, down near the coast, um, who get together and solve um, murders. And it's you know, every bit as fun as that sounds. And I just love this. It, you know, it was very, as I say, it was the best selling book in last year, so it might not have been to my taste, but everything I, 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 I had hoped it was going to be, it was. It was funny. There was a proper mystery. There's a, a vein of melancholy in here. These people are um, 70s and, and, and turning into their 80s and they know it and the people around them don't all survive and not just because they're being knocked off in nefarious plots and, and murders but because um, age catches up with all of us and that's very much a part of this and that's sort of actually sensitively handled and a, a real sort of um, addressed head on. Uh, uh, so that was kind of um, refreshing. Um, but the plot itself is, you know, infinitely intricate and and second guessy, and he, he probably pulls the sort of bait and switch that you see in in detectives, where you, you come in, you know, you know, you know the thing in a in a movie where the um, the police are about to open the door, and then you see inside the house the murderer standing there, and the the door, and then suddenly you really open the door, and it's a different house altogether. You've seen this trope a million times. It's a sort of bait and switch where they use the the camera angles and the and the um, quick cut, cutting between two different scenes that make you kind of think it's, there's a few of those, probably a few too many sort of bait and switches where you think that they're talking about something and then it turns out they're talking about something else or you think you've uncovered who the murderer is but actually it's just a clue to another murder. There's a lot of that in it but I, I don't mind it because it kind of pulls it off each time and even if it's a bit tropey, um, it was just so much fun. So as I say, I stayed up till 2.30 in the morning so I could finish this because I did not want to take a great big hardback with me on the plane. So that's it, I'm done. And now I've started one of the books I'm taking with me on holiday. Uh, and uh, it wasn't it, none of the books that I showed <laughs> in my previous video about what I was going to take. Uh, I started Blueberries by Elena Savage. Um, uh, and these are essays. 
uh, and I just sort of wrote the first three pages of the first one because I always like to move my bookmark over and start something new. So this is what I'm going to take with me. Maybe I'll do some reading on the plane, although I'm chance I may sleep on the plane because, as I say, it's three o'clock in the morning, haven't been to bed yet. Uh, good night, God bless, and I'll be in touch soon. Hello there. So uh, here in Santorini, we had a very um, easy time getting here. It's only about an hour and a half flight from Tel Aviv. Um, we had all our papers uh, in order, so everything was like uh, it was super easy. And uh, we're staying in this beautiful um, uh, hotel, sort of sweet this hotel that we, we found, and it's sort of carved out the side of a mountain. And I'm sitting on the balcony by the pool this morning, and now you can hear in the background they're playing some loud music by the pool. So I decided to come down here. Got this lovely little balcony with a screen. Let me just show you what it looks like. Um, the view that I'm sitting at the balcony. Let me turn around and you can get some view of this balcony. This is what we got here. Not a huge space, but a little table. And, this, and then this is what's going on. Um, and uh, we're going on a cruise to uh, that island over there. I think. Sunday. Uh, we've got a few other things that we're going to do before then. Tomorrow we're going to hire a cheeky little convertible and uh, go to some other spots on the island. Uh, um, weirdly, we bumped into good friends of ours at the airport that went here. They were traveling with some children uh, um, and uh, um, they're staying um, further north of the island. We'll meet them for dinner tomorrow night. That should be fun. And um, so far, so marvelous. We went out for dinner uh, last night, just uh, sat on the beach in a uh, little um, taverna and had uh, uh, a snack and came home. We got up this morning. We're the only people in breakfast when we get up because I think we're the oldest people in the hotel by roughly um, uh, 20, 25 years. Um, so this is what I'm reading right now, uh, uh, Blueberries uh, by Elena Savage. I started this on the, the plane, I'm uh, um, about two thirds of the way through now. These are essays, non-fiction, um, a little more um, Australian than I had anticipated, and uh, an awful lot of me. Is that, is that a criticism? I, I was always taught uh, when, when writing, even when writing essays, that um, you should remove yourself from, from the essay. There's, there's some good critical theory and great stuff on um, um, feminism and uh, um, uh, stories about Kathy Acker, stories about Hemingway, all people. Um, but then there's just an awful lot of Elena Savage. Um, and uh, um, uh, I'm finding that a little, um, a little much, if I'm honest. Uh, so I, I, I like the writing, um, I like the subjects of the, the essays. Um, more when the subject is not her. The, the, the very beginning is a very, very um, powerful essay about um, revisiting, uh, um, um, I think, Portugal, where she had 10 years earlier been uh, the victim of a sexual assault, and she revisits and tries to find out what happened to the people that she went to the police and that she left before the trial had been completed. And, and it's a very uh, a powerful, very moving story of tracing that down and um, her own relationship to the sexual assault she'd experienced and, and revisiting that and the impact it's had on her life and that was terrific that you know so I'm, I'm not complaining about me and that that was a story from her life but the rest of the time she's complaining about not having enough money for this and, and having slept with the wrong person that time and there's a lot of me 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 you know, a lot of millennial uh, meanness about it which i hope is not meanness on my part but uh, uh, i'm going to read the rest of these and then uh, have some more weekly stuff uh, and so that's all that's my update for now and i'm all to go so this day uh, so we arrived yesterday so this is like day two if you want to stay on we day two and uh, more updates later in the week thanks bye
rode a donkey down to the port and we took a cable car and we went uh, on a cruise and, and, and uh, this evening or last night we just um, went and sat by a beach, back to a beach that we'd been to earlier in the week and, uh, and uh, did, some, did some reading there and I've just had a great, great week of uh, a fabulous week with my wife, uh, super relaxing. I'm very tired, although hopefully you can't see it. I don't know how this light is going to come out. I don't know if any of this video is going to be usable. I'm using the light from my phone um, to capture anything that we've got here and this is my laptop recording. Anyway, just to take you through everything I've done this week. So, the book that I was reading on the plane when I started and finished the first book, Blueberries, I think I recorded something. I don't know that can't get around at all. I recorded like a review of this around the pool, and if we got to this point, you might have already heard of it. But uh, I thought the writing was great, but, but as I said, self indulgent. Uh, a lot of me um, and too much me for me. Um, that was Blueberries by Elena Savage. Uh, and after that, I went to the Retro and read the first Matt Helm. Um, um, Death of a Citizen uh, was through this whole series of games. Um, nothing like uh, um, uh, the movie series that I remember. I think it was a TV show, and I think they've been trying to revive it since then. Not, not at all. Matt Helm in this is a. Uh, um, uh, 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 this is 15 years after the end of World War II, where he'd been a super secret operative in Europe, uh, and he's uh, become domesticated and uh, married and, and a couple of kids and he kind of gets reactivated and um, um, plot ensues. Um, really terrific, really surprisingly um, um, uh, juicy, meaty, well written. I would love to, to find more of these. I've got this one on, on eBay um, and I love having one of these old editions. I'd like, you know, I, I, I've seen some newer reprints of these which I could get hold of, but I think I'm going to hold out and try and buy um, each one of these in sort of some kind of beaten old, beaten up old paperback, and uh, and I'll get a couple more of these. The next one thing is called the Wrecking Crew. This was Death of Citizen by by Donald Hamilton. Uh, um, yes, better than expected. Good, solid, 1960s spy stuff. Yes, not a great attitude towards uh, women, but not a terrible one either. Uh, uh, there's a good uh, fan fatale in this, and and Helm is is not a bad guy. He's just a bloke. Uh, um, but a good, solid, meaty one, and, and he gets, you yeah, wouldn't want to get on his bad side, um, as is revealed. Uh, um, okay, after that, uh, I did something you liked. We read, I read uh, The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bithel, uh, um and this is, uh, uh, he runs a bookshop in Wigtown called The Bookshop in Wigtown, and he had a, uh, has a Facebook page where he um, decided that his, that the gimmick for the shop would be to uh, um, express him, his attitude towards his customers in a sort of grumpy way. Um, I think he kind of models himself on the Dilemma Rand character in Black Books, which if you've never seen and you're a book lover, um, is a great sitcom from, I don't know when, with uh, Dilemma Rand and uh, uh, um, Bill, what's this, Bill Bailey and uh, um, Tamsin, Tamsin, uh, uh, um, what's her name? Anyway, she's lovely. Uh, uh, anyway, that's, a, that's another show, and he sort of references that here. Uh, and he runs this bookshop, and this is just a diary, literally a diary of his time in the bookshop and the stupid questions that people ask him. Uh, and the one on the back is that uh, someone comes in and says that their book group is uh, reading Dracula, but she can't remember what he wrote. And it's full of stuff like that. It's it's wry, it's witty, laugh out loud, funny, in a couple of occasions. Uh, um, my wife is uh, started reading this and was reading this on the beach afternoon and could not stop laughing. Well, it's not her kind of thing at all, but she didn't bring any books with her, so she's had to resort to reading the books that I brought. And uh, and she is loving this and laughing along with it. Um, really good stuff. I think there's a couple of sequels and, that I probably um, uh, and will not get around to because I don't think they're terribly necessary. But this was great. Um, not to mention this of a guy called um, Robert Twigger, uh, who was a, a, a frequent guest at the book festival they have in in Wigtown, and he wrote a book which won the William Hill Sports Book of the Year a few years ago, many years ago, uh, called Angry White Pajamas, which I'd read. And then other lots of mentions of this for book to, Booktube's own Jen Campbell um, shows up in this uh, a, a few times. So really good fun. If you love books, if you like the idea of working in a bookshop, this will disabuse you of, of the romance of that idea and a terrific read. 
um, so, uh, diary of a bookseller by Sean I don't know how to pronounce your surname Sean I apologise uh, after that again went retro again and um, read uh, Hopscotch by Brian Garfield uh, um, this is a book written in 1975 and then this is a, a reprint edition which is Otto Penzler Presents I think I've mentioned Otto Penzler before he is the proprietor of the mysterious bookshop in New York that I had the good fortune to visit a couple of years ago um, and uh, uh, I think he was the publisher of the mysterious press which I have a few of their editions as well of early James Elroy um, paperbacks and, and stuff as well so he's a known name in this world anyway so he's got given his name to this uh, reprint of, uh, of Hopscotch by Brian Garfield uh, so the book comes out in 75 and um, there was a movie in 1980 with um, uh, Walter Matthau as the uh, lead character and what we've got here is a guy called Miles Kendig is our, is our lead who is 53 years old and has been retired from the CIA um, he injured in action never you know he was a field agent uh, injured and so sentenced to um, life behind a desk and um, doesn't really get on with it and so takes retirement or is forced out because um, they're not going to put him back in the field and uh, um, feeling that his life has come to an end and, and doesn't really have very much to live for he concocts a plan um, to um, bring him back to life and reactivate himself and and have the world's um, um, spy agencies chasing after him to find out what he knows and what he's prepared to reveal. So he is chased by the CIA, MI5, um, the KGB are after him because he's threatening to reveal everyone's secrets. Uh, um, really, really true fun. I really want to go back and watch the I feel like I've seen the movie. Uh, um, um, Walter Matthau and I think Glenda Jackson maybe one of their I don't know if she's in it but anyway I, I feel like I've seen the movie uh, but I want to go back and watch it again because this was just terrifically written fun read uh, Brian Garfield I, I, I think also wrote um, um, the, the book upon which um, Death Wish was uh, based the Charles Bronson Michael Winner Death Wish which went on to spawn a bunch of sequels um, so matters I'm not sure even if you still with us apologize apologies if you are Brian but this was fantastic now uh, uh, after I read this my wife picked this up and read the whole thing because as I say she didn't have any books with her so she had to read the stuff that I had uh, um, uh, and she got a kick out of it as well it's it's fluffy it, it's serious the, the spy craft the trade craft going on here is first class um, but it's not bloody there's no you know people don't get that there's no wet work going on here this is just good old fashioned staying one step ahead of the people chasing you uh, um, and the hopscotch is he's hopping around from country to country uh, um, knowing that he's being tracked and uh, and getting away with it uh, um, and this is really uh, a terrific bit of 70s uh, spy um, thriller nostalgia um, after that I decided I'd better read um, an actual novel uh, and I read uh, Barn Aid by uh, Deb Olin Unferth, uh, a little uh, polemical, um, it's a novel it's a sort of eco novel uh, um, in which a, a couple of auditors so they, they work for uh, um, uh, uh, they're auditing um, battery hen farms, battery egg laying farms um, to make sure that the um, chickens are being treated properly and etc 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 that's that's the job uh, um while they're involved in this they just they hatch a hatch uh, um, pun intended i guess uh, um a nefarious plot to free the chickens this is oceans 11 uh, of battery farming they put a crew together and try uh, um to get away with around a million um egg laying hens uh, it is batty uh, um, it is uh, you know, um, really uh, um, quirky, um, but there's some solid um, storytelling here, and um, you know, some solid writing. It gets a little, but um, it's a little. You know, wouldn't be better, wouldn't the world be better if everyone was vegan? Um, it also jumps around a little bit. We have a little bit of um, uh, so we get different viewpoints, including at one point a chicken called Wap. Uh, um, that was my attempt at a chickens. Um, noise a chicken would make something like that. I don't know anyway that's the transliteration of the chicken's name and we get inside the chicken's mind a little bit as she makes her escape from the battery farm uh, it's a, as a quirky as it's about as possible to imagine but yeah um, reasonably enjoyable uh, um, you know the, the, when I read new um, um, first novelists uh, um, this is exactly the kind of thing that I wanted it's a, it's a ambitious big swing uh, um, I don't think it connects all the way. I think there are some strong uh, emotional beats and some um, 
and really is some fine character work. But then there's a few sort of um, cliches as well about the you know, the the, uh, um, the farmer of the chickens and his children, how they respond, and the second generation and the third generation farming, and some, some odd stuff about the wobbly table. Uh, um, so Barnade by Deb Olin Unferth, uh, a qualified recommendation. Good enough. Uh, um, then I read my first ever Hercule Poirot. Um, this is uh, The Mysterious Affair at Styles uh, by Agatha Christie. Uh, again, one of these lovely uh, beaten up pan paperbacks that I picked up on eBay. And, and this was also <laughs> yeah, really good. Um, um, uh, better than I expected, more sophisticated than I expected. So it was set in 1920s, so just after the First World War, and the aftermath of the war is still there. And at this time, um, Poirot is being. Um, is with a bunch of Belgian refugees staying in this village um, near Stiles and uh, um, crosses paths with uh, uh, Hastings who is who had worked with him and, and is an aspiring detective and there is a murder at, at Stiles where Hastings is a guest and he finds Poirot, bumps into Poirot in the village and invites him to uh, to come and investigate. Um, loads, you know, I, I guess that what I know about um, the, the most I know about Poirot I never watched the Suchet TV series, uh, but the original, the original, the Albert Finney Murder on the Orient Express is uh, um, a touch uh, a stone of mine. Uh, so what we know about that is lots and lots of characters, um, and uh, you know, starts out. This is the first appearance of Hercule Poirot, and he shows up very early on as well. That so I, I, I thought that sometimes with the way these stories work is that the scene is set and then Poirot sort of wanders in, um, um, uh, but no, Poirot shows up very early in this and. Uh, um, but we have a lot of characters, a lot of plausible um, um, suspects for the murder and some great clues uh, and when you think you've worked it out uh, you're being led by the nose by you know, someone who clearly knows what they're doing. Even this early on in the series uh, it seems that Agatha Christie had a fair idea of, of who Poirot was and how we were all going to um, um, understand and, and relate to his genius. Uh, really, you know, surprisingly entertaining for me. I was worried it was going to be a bit fuddy-duddy. Um, there's 50 or 60 of these to get through, and again, if I can pick them up a couple of times a year in these beaten-up paperbacks, I'd love that more than a sort of newer um, edition. I'd like something, you know, I'd love to have 30 or 40 of these on the shelves, and these, these old sort of, this is, you know, first, first printed in 1920, and this is an edition from the 50s, which was reprinted up to the 70s, so this is this first printing of this was 1955 but this is the 19th printing this is from 1971 and, and I'm all about that I can get these three four pounds uh, uh, or cheaper uh, I think that'd be a great great way to um, enjoy Poirot and I think they'll look great on the shelf uh, and then I read that and uh, uh, I'm now I've started and I'm going to take this on the plane with me tomorrow and, and either finish it on the plane or when I get back to Israel this is Dan Ariely's predictably predictably irrational and this was the first book my wife read and she, she read this before me and uh, and loved it and had some great anecdotes from this he's a behavioral econ economist behavioral economist uh, um, Israeli American Dan Ariely uh, a fascinating fascinating chap in his own right and this is just terrific so far I'm 100 pages in and uh, it's all about how um, not only are we not rational creatures we behave irrationally when we uh, um, think we're being rational, but we are predictably irrational. So that there, it, it's we can it, the, the ways that we behave irrationally are similar and and repeated patterns of behaviour, and how that relates to healthcare, dating, and a whole range of other subjects. Uh, a great mind. This is just fascinating, um, accessible, uh, uh, so, uh, sort of uh, social economics and and. and uh, uh, behavioral economics uh, um, filled with great anecdotes but also with actual experiments and results from experiments so he doesn't just come up with a, um, a theory a la Gladwell but actually shows you the evidence for how he came to that conclusion and talks you through the experiment and the questions that were asked and the results that he saw uh, and just so far so fascinating so 100 pages in really enjoying this uh, and that's it so, that's, so I've finished six books this is the seventh book uh, it's been a great week for reading a fantastic holiday and I have some video you'll have seen some or I'll put some in this whole thing and I will wrap it up um, when I'm back in Israel and, and frame this uh, and I hope this footage is usable I'm not sure it will be this is me signing off take it easy bye